If you're new to double kettlebells, this video is probably for you. Welcome to how to not smash your fingers with kettlebells 101. And when we first learn technique with kettlebells, we typically start with just one kettlebell at a time. Now this makes sense for a whole load of reasons. You really wanna only focus on one thing at a time as you're learning a new movement. Especially you just wanna concentrate on just one hand, let alone two hands at once. And you can do quite well with yourself just training with kettlebells, just using one kettlebell at a time. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if you want to open yourself up to many more exercise selections or even compete in kettlebell sport, it might be necessary for you to start using double kettlebells. However, it's not necessarily as easy as just using the exact same technique, but doing with the other hand at the same time. We might need to adjust a couple of things. And lucky for you, and unlucky for me, I have video of what can happen if you don't unlearn this one thing. So let's head up to the office. I started doing kettlebell sport in 2008 and every week I would do what was called a test set. And that was when I was trying to test myself for a certain time period. Most often times back then it was 10 minutes. I don't really advise people to do that nowadays, but yeah. So once a week I would try to do a 10 minute set and I would record said set. Now, this was fairly early on in my kettlebell sport journey, and I was not the greatest at knowing when to stop. You know, my ego was a little bit larger then, but as you can see, we're gonna show this video, and you're actually gonna see me injure myself in this video, and I'm gonna show you how I did that and how you can learn from me. So, without further ado, let's see this video. Test day number two. So, I once had hair, by the way, which was it's glorious. My head was a lot warmer back then. September 29th. So September 29th, 2008. As you can notice, I am in a garage. <laughs> this is my parents' garage, by the way. And uh, maybe that's why I'm so partial to garage gyms. I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, as you can see, I had a giant piece of plywood, a weightlifting mat, so what I would do actually was when I was done my set, I would just slide the mat all the way into the corner there and stack my kettlebells on top so my parents can still park their car in the garage. So, you know, when there's a will, there's a way. Because my dad does have a gym in the basement and he just didn't want uh, chalk indoors in the basement, so I was, I was banished to the garage. See? I'm already like a minute in, and you can see that my lockout is quite terrible. Looking back, I had no business lifting 32s at this point, so definitely don't mimic what I was doing back then. So we're just gonna skip ahead now so you can see where this is going. So th this is a good spot right now here. <laughs> uh. Yep, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's my dad just walking in the garage, just, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's what happens when you still live with your parents and you're an undergrad, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's the point where I'm actually going to hurt myself and pay close attention to what's actually happening here. So, did you see what happened? Let's go back. So you can see here, lockout was terrible. I started losing the lockout fairly early on, so as I'm lowering the kettlebell, my right arm is lowering before my left arm. So I'm trying to now bring it back towards me as the kettlebells are coming down. And I'm like leaning over to the side here. So you can see here, that it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but <clears throat> what's happening with my right hand, my fingers are actually over the handle. So as the kettlebells are coming down, I'm pinching my ring finger between the two handles. And that was pretty painful, I must say. Because it's really, it's really hard to tell, but you can see my fingers here, they're not quite tucking inside of the kettlebell handle so it's outside and exposed and thus susceptible to injury. 
Yeah, don't do that either. When you're in competition, just chuck the kettlebells down. It's quite bad etiquette. Solomon Macy's made a video about this the other week, so I highly recommend giving that one a watch as well. So 42 reps. Yeah, 42. But look at that finger. So I don't need to tell you that shortly after this, I lost that fingernail. You know, it's really not pleasant to have no fingernail on one of your fingers there. So definitely want to try to avoid this. And now what we'll do, we'll go back down to the garage gym and talk a little bit more about how we can avoid this. So when I first learned how to clean a kettlebell, this is what it looked like. with you. This is really what it looked like. So as you can see, my fingers are wrapped around the kettlebell handle. Now this is largely in part due to the fact that I was using a very horizontal uh, technique, so to speak, when I was holding the kettlebell. So especially with myself, because I do more kettlebell sport, we really want to make sure that we have one, the diagonal positioning of the handle. And this is what it looked like after I made that adjustment. So as you can see, it's a little bit better. However, it wasn't up until, I think it was probably Valeri Fedorenko who told me that, you know what, you really need to tuck in your fingers because if you have them out like that, then they're vulnerable, they're out in the open, so to speak. So really what you wanna do is tuck your fingers inside of the handle so that your fingers are protected from the other handle. Have them all tucked in or just the last two? I tend to have the index finger just out like that. I'm not sure why, I probably shouldn't do that, but that's just my habit that I've acquired over the years. I've never personally had a problem with it, but then again, when you bring the kettlebells handles together, this one is still kind of out of that danger zone for me. But then again, probably be a good idea just to have all the fingers like this tucked away. So, so what can happen is if you have say poor technique or using weight that's too heavy for you, like happened to me in the video that you just saw. Your technique when you come and clean the kettlebell is not going to be nice and crisp and smooth. What may happen is that the kettlebell handles just clang together. So when the kettlebell is in that final stage of the clean, as you're about to catch it in the rack position, you have two options. One, you can tuck your fingers in right away as you're catching the kettlebell. And once it's settled into the rack position, then overlap the fingers like that. Or what you can do is keep the fingers extended throughout the final phase of the clean. And once it's settled in the rack position, then overlap the fingers. Either way works. Now, when you press the kettlebells overhead or jerk them overhead, also really important to at the earliest portion, right as you're about to do that hip drive, right at this stage here, that is when, when the handles go up, you're going to immediately just tuck your fingers in right away. And overhead, they're going to stay tucked in as well. Get into the habit of always doing that. So as you're lowering them into the rack position, you still wanna make sure that your fingers are tucked in to that handle so that they are not exposed to the other handle. And only once the kettles have stopped moving, you're in the rack position, then release your fingers, overlap them. So if you like this video, I would really, really appreciate it. Give me a like, please subscribe, please share it with a friend who does kettlebell training, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Okay, I'm going to the dentist this week.